could rise, hey Carl, rise and grind my Nubians, for all of those of you listening, for all my Aberisha and uh, those who are following this way and following this truth, I welcome you to the new day, you know, wherever you're at. And if you're tuning in later than a new day, then that's cool too. Um, either way, I welcome you. And of course, we're coming from the shrine. And um, I'm going to give you your, your pieces to kind of reflect on and meditate on for the day. All right, I'm here uh, actually preparing some medicine right now. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking, yeah, well, I guess like every day. But um, getting some things together for a ritual and a ceremony I have to do for someone a little uh, later tomorrow. But preparing, I like to be well prepared. But anyway, so Osa Meiji gives us something very important that um, we can reflect on and think about on this day. And Osha Meiji tells us that um, bells and loud noises and dancing and singing um, came down to earth. And this was consulted for Ogun, uh, Orumila, and Odu. And this, this consultation they received when Olodumare was sending them down to earth and uh, he said okay he said you will go down there and you will use all of the power with all of the powers that you have you can go down to earth and you can make a good place you can make a good existence um, for the people who live there and make the earth a better place right so he said I've given you all the power to accomplish this so in that um, everyone started to move where they needed to move, right? First, Ogun goes, he goes first. He started to move forward, okay, let's make it happen. And then Obatala followed him, and then slowly behind her, I mean behind him, was Odu. She kind of like was just kind of dragging her feet, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about sometimes. People do that when they're not so sure about what they what they're doing, but they're kind of going along with the motions. So then she says to Olu Dumari, she says, "You know, what am I going to do? You know, and she's the only woman there, by the way. She's the only woman. And she said, "What am I going to do?" She said, "You know, Ogun, you have given him warfare, and you have given him a machete, and you have given him even a hammer. So people will listen to him." And he can do whatever he want, be, wants because he has the power of, of warfare and he has his cutlass. In, in Obatala, you've given authority to Obatala, so people will listen to what he says to do. But I don't have anything. So how can I go down there and make the world any better or do anything when you've not given me anything? So Olo Dumare says, hold on a second. He said, hold on. I've given you the ashe of motherhood, which sustains the entire earth. And on top of that, I've given you bird power. And bird power, I've given you, in fact, I'll, I'll give you a whole gourd of it, of the bird power. So he said you have the motherhood, the ashe of motherhood to sustain the earth, and you have a whole gourd of bird power, right? But then he pulls her in closer. He says, you know, Odu, come here for a second. And he said, um, will you know how to use this power I have given you? Will you know how to use it? And she said, if people come to me, or if people do not ask for my advice, and they begin to get, you know, disrespectful and impertinent, <clears throat> she said, then I'll fight. And she said, if people ask me for children and they ask me for money and I give them to them and they get disrespectful, I'm going to take everything back. You see? So she said, you know, if they come to me, 
And they, or if they don't ask for my advice, they don't ask my input on things, I'm going to fight. She said, if I give them children, I give them money, and they begin to get rude and impertinent, I'm going to take everything back. So, Olo Damari said, okay, no problem. That's, that's not an issue, right? Um... I'm looking for an herb. Is that what I want? No. So Olo Dumare said, um, okay, I'll add that after. So Olo Dumare said, okay, cool. But he said, listen, if you don't act appropriately, I'm going to take everything back from you. Okay? So with that, she, um, she went forward to Earth, right? And um, the reality is, because of that, because of what she she was given by Olu Dumare, she was able to do whatever she wanted, right? So she she went places she wasn't supposed to go. She said things she wasn't supposed to do. You know, she moved in a way that she wasn't supposed to move, right? So. Um, Oludumare says, listen, you know, after he sends her, um, there was a time, and he, he said, okay, you know, women will have the power to do whatever it is that they want, because in the absence of women, men can't really get things done, get anything done, right? So, Ifa consulted for, for Odu. Ifa came to Odu and said, listen, Odu, you're gonna to have to calm down. Like, you're doing too much. You're going here, you're going here, you're saying things you're not supposed to say, you're doing things you're not supposed to do. You're just doing whatever you feel like doing, and that's not what we came here to do. You need to relax. And Odu said, No, why should I? Specifically, she said, Why should I? No. She said, Um, I have powers that people don't understand because they weren't there when they were given to me. No one saw them given to me. So they don't even know what it is that I actually truly can do, right? So, let me see if I look for some of my herbs. So, um, Orumina said, because of the power that was given to you, people won't understand what you're all about. So he was like, listen, you need to sacrifice. And um, <clears throat> Odu flat out, flat out said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not sacrificing, right? So with that, you know, as time came, um, you know, she then decided she wanted to put on the masquerade, right? Okay, and um, she wanted to go go out like you know she wanted to masquerade, so she put on her masquerade costume, right? And um, while she was she was masquerading, um, Obatala he comes to Ifa, and he said, um, you know, Oludumari put me in charge of the earth, right? But this woman who is so energetic. And that's the word he used, energetic. You know, she's she's going to ruin everything. She's just doing whatever she feels like doing, whatever she wants to do, right? <clears throat> so, Ifa pretty much consoled Oludumare because, I mean, I'm sorry, Ifa pretty much consoled Obatala because Obatala was saying that wherever she wants to go, she goes. And he was saying, there's no place this woman won't go. And he's basically saying, like, she's going into all of the sacred places that she's not supposed to go into, right? So, Orumila says to Obatala, listen, don't worry about it. Calm down, because no one can take from you what Olodumare has given you. No one can spoil for you what Olodumare has given you. So he said, don't worry, she won't spoil the earth. And she can't wrestle the earth from you. No matter, no matter what you're imagining, she can't take that from you. Relax, okay? So Obatala was consoled in that, and then he was able to go 
and to continue to do the things that he was supposed to do. Okay, but Orumilas told him, he said, listen, you need to make a bow, you need to make an offering. So the offering he told him, he said you need to, to sacrifice eight pieces of money, snails, and a whoop, and a whip, excuse me, not a whoop, a whip, right? So he did that. He was obedient and he made the, the ebo, right? So then what happened was, okay, what's this? All right, what's this? Okay, so then what happened, um, as this was happening and he was he was gathering the things he needed for his Ebo, Odu was out and she was telling people, don't look at me, right? But people are hard-headed, so they were looking at her anyway. So whenever they would look at her, they would go blind when they were looking at Odu, right? So then she goes to Obatala and she says, Let's live together, because if we live together, you can observe everything I do, because obviously, you know, a woman knows when you're looking at her. So he was, she was like, you're looking at me anyway, so let's live together, and you can observe, you can observe everything, right? So Obatala said, okay, fine, but first what he did was he propitiated his head with the snails, right? And <clears throat> after he propitiated, or, or he cleaned, he served his head or worshipped his head, which is really what we what we would would consider it. Um, he worshipped his head with the snails, right? And then once he did that, he then drank some of the water from the from the snails, and then he gave some to to Odu. He was like, "Would you like to have some of the water from the snails?" Right? And she drank it, and she was like, "Oh my." goodness this is delicious she was like snail water is so sweet she just kept saying she just kept saying snail water is sweet it's so sweet I love this right so he was like okay cool well whenever you want it I'll give it to you whenever you want snail water I'll, I'll, I'll give you the snail water and she was like perfect because it's just it's so sweet right so um So then after that, um, when she drank that snail water, <clears throat> her stomach calmed down. Because all this time she had a stomach that was racy and energetic, and it was the snail water that calmed her down, right? So, um, when she went to go, to go worship a gungun, right, she was always frightened. Okay, she was always frightened when she went to go worship a gungun, and Obatala agreed to go out with her. Right, one day he said, "Okay, I'll, I'll go out with you, and I'll do the gungun work with you." Right? Okay. Excuse me, one moment. I just need to get some some of my herbs. All right, I'm still, I'm still building with you. I still got you. All right. Hold tight. I need. All right, here we go. So yeah. <laughs> so Obatala goes out with her, right? And. Once he did that, you know, he noticed because she would go out and she couldn't make the sound like a gungun. That was her problem, right? So she would make the sound and sound and things wouldn't come out right. So eventually he added a net face to her her a gungun masquerade um, costume, and he put he put it on, and he was able to make the sound exactly like the a gungun. And the people said, oh, wow, like, what? what is, this must be a supernatural being. This must truly be the Egungun that has filled this costume because it has even scared Odu. You know, because they knew Odu to be, you know, <laughs> riotous almost. Like, you know, not, nothing scares her. She just does whatever it is that she wants to do, you know. 
So all over the town, Obatala began to fill up everyone's Egungun costume to go inside of it and fill it up, right? So, um, sorting through my herbs here. So then, um, Odu comes back home. Okay, got my mugwort. And she noticed that her costume was like laid up in the house, like somebody basically used it, right? And um, once she noticed that, she said to Odu, she said, here we go, that's what I was looking for. Looking for my yarrow. <laughs> uh, I need this, and I also need some of this. You guys know about this? Probably reading backwards on the screen, right? I'll teach it. I'll, I'll teach herbs to my Anu people. Next retreat, I decided uh, on the next retreat we do for Anu members that I'm gonna do a um, Osayin, do some Osayin initiations, and really get into <clears throat> the way we use herbs. Not all the herbs we use, as I will. But with the way we use them is much different. The times of day that we use them, how we pick them is much different than, um, you know, just when you go into a store or something and, you know, going to go get herbs or whatever, you know, it's much different. But, um, yeah, so in any event, right? So she said, listen, I'll let you, you can, you can, you can wear a mask. I'll, I'll let you do the Egungun thing or Batala. But she said this, but I'll stay home. She said, I'm gonna stay home while you go do the egungun piece. But she said, um, you can have it and no longer will any woman put on the egungun cloth. But she said, what will happen though, um, the power that you use belongs to us. So I'm gonna send my bird to sit on your shoulder, right? And my boy, there we go. And she said, um, she said, but based on that, she said, I won't come out there with you, but no one, woman, man, or small child will ever make fun of women. She said, because without women, no one can get their projects done. That was the language specifically in the sacred Odu of, of Osha Meiji. Without women, no one can get their projects done. So no one will make fun of us. And she said, you know, if you follow that and everything that, everything will be cool, right? So from there, they started to sing Odu and Obatala. They sung together. And what they sung was that, you know, it was a song where they said every strong, or what some of you may say every seven day cycle, Back then it was a four day cycle, but we'll just stick to, we'll stick to what you know. Um, every seven day cycle, every strong, you know, men will thank women. They would get down on a knee and they will thank women because of the power that they possess and the fact that they cannot accomplish anything without them. Okay? So, once this was done, everything was peaceful. Because now, there was a balance of power established. And there was a balance of power established with the balance of knowing. Right? And, um, Odu said, well, the song said, and Odu's part is, you will bend the knee because women have put us into the world. Women have put us into this world so you will bend the knee. And women provide your first intelligence so you will bend, you will bend the knee. Matriarchy and patriarchy can't exist within 
adjacent spaces. All right. Now, I'm giving that to you in traditional fashion. I will let you extract the goodness of that particular Odu or the story from that Odu Osa Meji. Feel free to put it into the comments and um, discuss it among yourselves. What you pull and extract it and what maybe you were able to see. And I know some will, it will fly right over people's heads, I know. And then for some, it won't fly right over their heads, I know. And between the two of those, <laughs> what really happened is going to rise up out of it. All right? This has been Chief Yuya from the Shrine. Um, be on the lookout. I have a new project coming forth, a beautiful, beautiful project for children that I want you all to support once I release it, um, which will probably be mm, early to mid-March. All right, I'm trying to do it around the solstice. Uh, I'm sorry, not the solstice, the vernal equinox, which is the 20th, all right? So just be on the lookout. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Um, subscribe to the other channels, the Chief Yuya channel as well, and click the little um, notification button so you can always see what's happening and get it quick. But I'm saying that mainly too so you'll be in tune when it's released. All right, so uh, until such time, move well, move safely, um, be kind to each other and really reflect and consider on the sacred uh, teachings that Osha Meiji has just given us, you and I, until such time, Odabo.